I really, really want to reach uh, all of you from all over the world because I know that you're located everywhere and I wanted to just tell you how much I appreciate you, how much I love you, but not only that, how much I hear you. I really hear you. When you write to me, when you write on my Facebook page, when you write your questions, when you write in through my website, I actually do hear you. I read your messages. I'm not always able to respond to them. I can't, uh, keep, I can't keep up with all of you. You're too fast for me. But I want you to know that I hear you and I try to address everything that comes up um, whenever I can in these Facebook Live videos and other videos that I do. So I really do try to address them. I also address them on my Hay House radio show. I have a brand new website which I'd love for you to check out. Uh, and this website is much more resourceful where we've got a page with all my videos, we've got a page with all my radio shows. So please, please do check out my brand new website. It's anitamurjani.com. <clears throat> and um, also, I love to come and visit you all. I mean, when I, uh, I love to come to your country and I love to come and speak. So what I'm really excited about is in September, I'll be coming to the UK and I will be speaking at the I Can Do It event hosted by Hay House, which is on the 30th of September and 1st of October. I'll be there with a great lineup of people. So please do join me. There'll be amazing speakers like Robert Holden, and um, David Hamilton, Kyle Gray, Marianne Williamson, Sonia Choquet, many, many others. So please, please join us. And I would love to see you, would love for you to say hi. Uh, today, what I really wanted to talk about is a topic that comes up again and again, which is the topic of fear. And many of you are feeling fear about different things. You're feeling fear about the state of the planet, feeling fear about things that are going on in the world. You're also feeling fear about health challenges. So I want to speak about the different types of fear and how to transcend it. So the first thing I want to say is that when you're feeling fear, don't judge the fear. Because many of us, because we believe that fear is unhealthy, we then start to fear the fear. We say, oh my God, I'm feeling fear. Is it going to attract more fear? Is it going to attract more bad stuff into my life? Um, is it going to attract cancer? Is it going to be bad for my immune system because I'm feeling fear? Then you start fe fearing the fear and then you compound it. So here's what I want, to, want you to do. When you feel fear, just accept it. Give yourself a hug and say, I hear you. I hear you. And just give yourself a nice tight hug. And a fear, when you feel fear, it's an invitation calling you to love yourself more. So how do you do that? That's, so that's what I'm going to address next is how do you then transcend this fear to love? So first thing is accept it. Don't judge it. You can only transcend things to love when you accept them, when you accept what is, not when you judge it. Because when we judge things, we suppress them. When we suppress them, we're saying it's wrong, it's bad. It means we're judging a part of ourself. It means we're not accepting who we are, which is not a loving thing. So the first loving act is to accept every part of you, including your fear. The second part, is to ask yourself, what is the fear telling you? So for example, if you are dealing with a health challenge, if you're dealing with an illness, um, usually an illness is your body's way of telling you that you're not living your life um, on purpose. You're not being who you came here to be. And when we're not being who we came here to be, in other words, when we start to dim our light, when we stop uh, finding our joy, when we stop feeling joy in our life, when we're starting to do what everyone else wants us to do, when we believe that we have to meet expectations as opposed to follow our own heart, um, that's when we start to feel constricted and then our body sends us these wake-up calls. So the first thing to do if you're dealing with a health challenge is to start tuning in and listening to your body and asking your body, what is it that it's trying to tell you? Very often I put this question to my body before going to sleep at night and see what insights I come up with when I wake up in the morning. Or I'll take some quiet time 
and I'll go walk in nature and, um, and then I'll kind of tune into my body and say, what are you telling me? And it'll tell me. Now here's the thing, the, the thing that we tend to do uh, by default, which actually exacerbates the fear. When you're feeling with a health challenge, here's what we do. We start obsessing about the health challenge. We start obsessing about our health. That actually compounds the fear when we do that. So what I want you to do is to tune into your body, ask your body what it is that its message is, but at the same time, I would also invite you to think in terms of, if I had my health back, what would I do with the rest of my life? I want you to start getting excited about what you would do with your life if you had a clean bill of health. In that excitement, build on that excitement and start thinking, okay, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take a trip to here. I'm gonna look for a new kind of work. I'm gonna do this. And when you start doing that, you'll realize that what excites you is so different from what you've been doing until you got the health challenge. So really what your health challenge is trying to tell you is you're supposed to be living that life that excites you, but you've been living this life just to pay the bills, just to meet everyone else's expectations. And this health challenge has come here to wake you up. It hasn't come here to make you focus on your health. And it's not even about focusing on your illness. I'm even telling you, don't even focus on your health. Focus on your life. Focus on your reason for living. It doesn't matter what stage your illness is at. I want you to focus on your reason for living. Focus on who you love. Focus on those who love you. If you've been lonely up until that point, that could be the message that your body is sending you. If you've hated your job, that could be the message that your body is sending you. It's time to move on with your job. It's time to connect with people. So connect with other people. If you've been lonely, start to change that. Tell yourself, what would excite me if I got my clean bill of health? The last thing you want to do if you get a clean bill of health is to go back to that old life that was causing you to have this situation in the first place. And that, when, I, when the cancer healed from my body, when I was coming out of hospital, my biggest fear was going back to the old environment where I got the cancer in the first place because I knew exactly what it was that caused it for me. So that's the journey you have to go on. You have to get to know yourself, get to know who you are. And let's say, <clears throat> excuse me, if your fear is not the fear, of, you're not fearing illness right now, but you're fearing the condition of the planet. So here's what I'm going to invite you to do. If you're fearing the condition of the planet and what's happening in the government and what's happening generally in your country, whatever it is, what, what tends to happen with our minds is that our minds t tend to be biased. And when we go out in the world, when we watch TV, when we read, our minds look for confirmation of what we believe. So if you believe that this world is not a safe world, that is what your mind will focus on everywhere you go. For example, have you noticed that when you buy a new car, suddenly you notice everybody who's driving the same car? Or when you buy a car of a particularly bright color, which you've never seen before, you think, I wanna be unique, I'm gonna buy this bright orange car. But after you buy this bright orange car, you suddenly notice, wow, there's a lot of people who drive bright orange cars because suddenly it's in your awareness. So right now, the media, and when I say the media, I'm talking about things like the news media, the big media, they have us focused on fear. If that's where your flashlight is focused on, and check back my YouTube video on, um, on my TED talk where I talk about the focus of the flashlight. If your flashlight is focused on fear, that's what you're going to see every time you go out into the world because, because that's, what, that's where your focus is. And our minds will, are so biased that they look for confirmation. And so, Here's what I want you to do is I want you to take, let's say, five beliefs that are not serving you. 
Um, so this is how you transform fear to love. We're like with the health, you transform fear to love by focusing on life, by focusing on joy and not on the illness. For if you have fears in the world, you take your five biggest fears. Let's say, I fear that I live in an unsafe world. Um, I fear I'm, uh, uh, I live in a world that's, full, that's scarce, that's not abundant, a world of scarcity. Pick your fears, just pick your fears. And then I want you to come up with the opposite of that fear. If your fear is, I feel I live in an unsafe world, now I want you to write down the opposite of that, which is, I believe I live in a safe world. And then if you feel you live in a world of scarcity where there's not enough to go around, change that to, I believe I live in an abundant world. Now what I want you to do is, after you've come up with five fears, pick one and say, I'm gonna focus on this one. And as I focus on it, I am going to look for confirmation as I go out into the world. I'm gonna look for confirmation of this truth, of this belief. When your mind is focused on it, you will find confirmation. And I want you every day to come up with at least five confirmations for the opposite of each of your fears. So the opposite, which means not the fear, but the love, the opposite, which is a love statement, a belief that serves you. And so I actually want you to write it down, put it into your smartphone, whatever it is, pull it up to remind you. And when you're out there, when you're watching TV, when you're on social media, look for the opposite. So for example, if, I, if my fear is that I fear I live in a, in a fearful world or I live in a dangerous world or an unsafe world, the opposite is I believe I live in a safe world that always has my well-being um, at heart, that always takes care of me. When I have that at the forefront of my mind, it's really true. That's what I see. When I'm on social media, I read the beautiful stories of people helping children, helping pets. Um, when I'm here in my own neighborhood, uh, everybody feels really friendly. Just walk out in your own neighborhood and it is so different from what you see happening on the news. And I'd love for you to share your stories of the opposite of all the fears that people are feeling in the world. I would love to share your stories, your experiences in the thread below this video. I would also love for you to share this video for anyone you think that it will help. And also I would love to take questions from you. And I wanna thank you for all the hearts and the love and the emojis. Thank you so much for tuning in. And I'm ready to take questions from you. Um, I'm gonna ask my beautiful assistant, Milena, to shout out the questions to me. Maureen Heffernan asks, how about if your health is compromised from things you did to yourself? Okay, that's a beautiful question. And hi, Maureen, thank you for tuning in. Love you. Um, so if it's from things you did to yourself, the first thing I want you to do is to forgive yourself. Because when you do things to yourself, it's almost like you are crying out for love. So for you, the most important thing is to love yourself. And if you are going through any kind of pain, emotional pain, grief, so it's emotional first, spiritual, emotional first. Physical, your physical condition is a result of your spiritual, emotional self. So focus on that first. Heal and heal through love. Absolutely, there is no room for judgment for you because you have to realize that you are an expression of God. You are an expression of the universe. You have no right to deny God or the universe from expressing itself through you. And the way to do that is to love yourself. You have no right not to love yourself. That's what I would like you to do, is to make a commitment to love yourself. Thanks, Maureen. Carrie asks, what about when your worry is over another's health? So when your worry is over another's health, you have to be careful that it doesn't bring you down because you take your energy with you wherever you go. The best thing you can do for other people is to keep yourself uplifted. And that's the only way you can help other people. You can't force them to do anything that they won't, that they don't want to do, or that they won't. Um, you can't force them. So, let me tell you a little bit about what happened with me. Um, 
when my best friend was sick, I felt so guilty that I was well. I was so worried about her health. I would spend all my time with her. And then went and, and to the point where I made myself sick. And when I made myself sick, that was the only time when I started taking care of myself. But even then I was so fearful. When we are fearful, this is the person we take with us and we're less helpful to the people around us because it doesn't matter what you say. It doesn't matter what you do. People can feel your energy. And this is something in our language, in our culture, we don't even acknowledge it. We don't even talk about it. But in actuality, the most important thing that you can do if you are sick is to surround yourself with happy, uplifted people. Surround yourself with the people who you want to be like. And if you are not sick and you're going to look after someone who's sick, do it when you're feeling uplifted because you're not doing anybody any favors if you're feeling worried, torn down, obligated, any of those things because that's the energy you're bringing to them. Uh, and uh, I think I had one last thing to say about that was that, um, yes, people can sense your energy and I've lost it, but it might come to me later. But thank you for that important question. Sharon asks, what do I do about physical pain? How do I get away from focusing on that? Yeah, physical pain is a challenging one. And what I tell people is that even if you need to take medication to, um, to alleviate physical pain, take it because um, sometimes you need the break from physical pain to do the internal work. But the medication is not the healing itself. The medication is not the cure. The cure comes internally because you want to be able to be free of physical pain without medication. But as you're doing the inner work, by all means take whatever medication you need to at least alleviate the physical pain so that you can start to discover who you are. The biggest journey for any of us is to discover who we are and we need space to be by ourselves to discover who we are. So with the physical pain, take medication, but there are also other things that I recommend like tapping for, for example, and Nick Ortner has done some great work on tapping and the tapping solution. So I would recommend that because I know that has helped me in the past when I was dealing with, uh, with the cancer. That's helped me a lot with the physical pain and there are other, other. So by all means, use all the tools and then also do the inner journey. In fact, I don't like to call it work, go on an inner journey. There are a couple people asking, how do I love myself? What do you specifically mean? What things can I do? Okay, so the first thing is stop judging yourself. Stop judging yourself for not being able to love yourself. Stop judging yourself. Uh, what are the signs that you don't love yourself? The signs are that you put yourself last, that you forsake yourself, you put yourself last, that you feel guilty for having fun. Um, you feel fearful about everything. You feel you're not worthy to get, say, maybe a good job or to have abundance. You don't feel worthy. These are the signs of not loving yourself. Uh, you feel needy all the time. You feel inadequate among other people. You have dreams and hopes, but you feel, who am I to accomplish them? These are the traits or these are the symptoms of a lack of self-love. And um, I would love for you in the comments below to tell me more symptoms that you feel, which you know are symptoms of lack of self-love. Um, symptoms like you feel unlovable. You feel that um, when you're in a relationship, you can't understand why your partner loves you and you feel you have to work really hard at being deserving or worthy. When you're in a job, you feel you have to work really hard to win approval. Even in a situation with friends, you feel you have to work hard to win approval. You're afraid to say no to people and you say yes even when you want to say no. These are all traits of lack of self-love. So what does it mean to love yourself? To love yourself, it means knowing that I am worthy of my dreams. If those dreams are coming to me, it means that 
I am worthy of them. It means that I am worthy of at least attempting to accomplish them. If this is my calling, then I am worthy of achieving it, whatever it is in terms of work, job, friendship. If it is my calling to go in this direction, if it's coming from my heart, it means I am worthy and deserving of it. That's what it means to love yourself. To love yourself means being free to follow your calling and know that, that you deserve it and you're worthy of it. I could go on on this topic for a long time. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make that a topic for another Facebook Live. So tune in for that. And I would love to jump into the next question for this one, because I think we only have time for one or two more. One more. Yes. One more. Um, Nika is asking how to heal social anxiety and fear of being judged. Ooh, fear of being judged and social anxiety. Oh my gosh, that's something that I used to suffer from as well. I completely relate to you, sending you a nice big hug right now, Mika. And it's funny because um, I am currently writing a book right now, my third book, um, which, is, which covers on this subject about being judged. When we fear being judged, we end up being a people pleaser. And what happens is that everyone else pulls our strings. Everyone else controls us. We give our power away to other people because our biggest fear is shame and being judged. So I'd like you to identify that, that that is your fear. You've already taken the first step of realizing that this is what you feel and this is what you suffer from, so to speak. So that's a wonderful first step. I want you to now imagine that you are a child and now I want you to project onto this child everything that you know about yourself, your fears, your fears of being judged, your fears of being ina inadequate, your fears of being shamed. I want you to imagine now this child has come up to you and has said to you all these things. I have this fear of being judged. I fear I'm inadequate. I fear I'm not good enough. And I want you to look at this child in your mind's eye, look at this child, and I want you to imagine what would you say to that child? Because that child is you. It's the younger you. It's the little you. So every time you have some, a feeling like that, identify it, project it onto your child, a child that is the younger you, and I want you to now imagine everything that you would say to that child, that you want that child to know. You wouldn't say to that child that, yes, you are unworthy and yes, you should be judged and you should be ashamed of yourself. You would never say that. By the same token, the world is not saying that to you either. The more vulnerable we make ourselves, the more the world actually empathizes with us. So now I want you to empathize with that child and perhaps even write a letter to your younger self and say what you would say. And if while you're writing the letter, you're crying, if you start to cry, if you can dig up your tears and get really deep as to what you would say to that child, that poor child who feels shame, who feels judged, tell her everything you need to tell her to lift her up and for her to know that she is a divine being of the universe. Lift her up from feeling that shame which she doesn't deserve to feel. As you write it, the more you cry, the more healing it is, the more you're really getting to the root of what, what is truly going on within you. That's what it means to love yourself. That truly is. It means to love yourself like you would love your own child, like you would love your own pet, I know you love your children unconditionally. I know you love your pets unconditionally. You would do anything for them. That's what I want you to be able to do for yourself. And thank you so much for tuning in. I wish I could go on and on and on, um, but apparently <laughs> I, uh, I have to rush off somewhere else. And I'm really grateful for you tuning in. And if any of you are in the UK, at the end of September, on September 30th, 1st of October, I'm going to be speaking at the I Can Do It event in Birmingham. And I would love to see you, would love you to drop by and say hi. Um, and I can't wait to see you then if you're going to be there. Otherwise, tune into my next Facebook Live or check out my website or just say hi on Facebook. Love you guys. Thank you. Bye.